to answer the king, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. And notice what they're saying is that uh, the, the word careful is a, a compound word. It's composed of the word care and the word fool. Uh, and so we may we, we may almost look at that word like anxiety. And uh, so what they're saying is we, we don't have any anxiety. We're not full of care over the answer that we're going to give no, to you. Right. You just told us if we don't do what you say that you're going to throw us into a fiery furnace and, uh, and essentially have us executed. Uh, but we're not even in any in, 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 in type of anxiety over that. We're not full of care over that. We don't have to go talk to the counselor. Amen. We don't have to schedule an appointment with, 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 uh, with the psychiatrist. So we tell him, so they, we've got one answer really, 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 really quick for you. Uh, we will not bow down and worship our God. Uh, no matter what. Well, let's read, I guess, uh, he, uh, verse 16. He says, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, uh, whom we serve, uh, is able. Now watch what he says. If it be so, if it be so, uh, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. He's able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, yes, from the Lord. burning for fiery furnace, and He will deliver us out of thine hand, O King. Yes. Watch verse eighteen. But if not, that's right. But if not. Uh -huh. he, 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 he will, that's our hope, right. he's able, yeah. that we know, yeah, that's right. but if not, not, but if not, if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, right. nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You can Amen. be seated uh, today Amen. in the presence Amen. of our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here in uh, Daniel chapter number 3, we arrive at a time when Israel uh, is not occupying their homeland. Uh, they have rebelled against God. They have walked away from His commandments. And God has raised up prophet after prophet to speak to them, uh, to warn them, to direct them, and to tell them to repent. And, but they refuse to heed the call of repentance. And as a result of that, God allowed this foreign nation, uh, whose king was a man named Nebuchadnezzar, who occupied a place called Babylon. Babylon to come down into Israel to ransack the country, to take over their country, to spoil their goods, and to carry the best of their people away into captivity, back to the Babylonian captivity. And so when we read Daniel chapter number three, we are not finding Israel or God's people at a time when they are in their homeland. They are in a foreign land. They are being occupied and ruled over by a foreign king. And how many of y'all know that when when you're occupied by a foreign king, sometimes foreign kings have strange customs. They want you to do strange things. In fact, they kind of say like this, if you don't inject yourself with some needle that's only been around for a year and a half, we're going to take away your jobs and you're not going to be able to work. Because when you elect a foreign strange king, don't be surprised when foreign strange kings do foreign strange things. freedom of, of our medical of freedom that we can do as we will because this is still uh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Be all with me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're the dwelling uh, in, a, in a foreign land under a foreign king and, and they have strange customs in this land. The king said here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise up a big statue of myself and I'm going to make it a golden image. It's going to be beautiful right. In fact, you're going to look at it and you're going to think to yourself, man, this is a beautiful statue. It's not going to be some ugly thing. It's not going to be some terrible looking thing, but it'll be overlaid with gold and beautiful. But uh, here's what I want you to do. That every once in a while, we're going to have the band start playing. And when they start playing, and when you hear the sound of the harp and the sackbut and the psaltery and the dulcimer, 
They're not going to put me in jail. They're going to kill me. They're going to throw me in the midst of a burning fiery furnace unless I should bow down and boogie uh, to their beats. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I would submit to you that America is, is looking more uh, like Babylon. day that goes by. I never dreamed we'd, we'd, that I'd live in a generation that thinks it's weird and wrong to celebrate Thanksgiving. But I tell you, and that's a true story, but you know what's happening in the major colleges right now? They're, they're, they're beginning to teach people, uh, and it's just now beginning to hit the college students uh, that, that Thanksgiving is a bad, cel a bad celebration because America was founded in a bad way. And I'm not saying that everything that happened in our founding was right, Search of the, all, every country in the world, and you find things that maybe were a little wrong with the founding of their country. But, but now the college students are being told Thanksgiving's wrong, and then they're going to be told Christmas is wrong. But you know what's not wrong? Booze. You know what's not wrong? Smoking. You know what's not wrong? Come on, the stuff that we call sin for, for as long as we can imagine. You know what's never been wrong in our society? A police officer. society. This is beginning to look a little bit like a strange land to me. And when you have, when you live in a strange land, Kelly, you've got to be prepared for the moment when they call you on the carpet for you to compromise. Because that's what they're after. You see, they don't mind you having your little religion in the four walls of your church, but don't make too much noise. And don't get too vocal. And don't speak against our political agenda. Come on. And don't say anything sin. Oh, and by the way, when we tell you to celebrate sodomy, you will celebrate it yeah. or else. Amen. That's what we're saying. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. Uh, amen. I don't know if you guys can see the handwriting on the wall or not, but this thing is beginning to head into a Babylonian system whereby we are the outsiders, whereby Christianity is a strange thing, whereby whereby preaching is wrong and now we're going to be eventually called on the carpet for a moment of compromise when we in this generation hear the sound of the salt and the, and the sultry and the dulcimer and all kinds of music wow. who will we be when we hear the music playing Come on, man. Amen. look at with me in Daniel chapter 3 verse 4 Daniel chapter 3 verse 4 the Bible reads, Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people and nations and languages, that at the time when you hear the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp and the sack, and the sack blood and the psaltery uh, and dulcimer and, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whosoever falleth not down in worship loses their job. And whosoever falleth not down in worship, they can't hold in a, in a job in America and make a livelihood and make a living because now we've said that you got to put this in your body or you can't work. Come on. That's not what it said, but it's essentially the same thing. Amen. And whosoever falleth not down and worship the same hour shall be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And so now there's pressure uh, to compromise. You all feel that pressure? Yeah. I feel the pressure. I'm not even just talking about the shot. The shot wasn't even in my notes. It just, it just hit me all of a sudden. But I'm talking about pressure to compromise in general. I mean, we're living in a time when they think it's normal to see two dudes holding hands walking down the street. They you don't think there's a pressure to compromise. They want us to quit talking about it. They want us to quit saying stuff about it. They want us to pretend it's all normal. It's normal for a man to marry another man and a woman to marry another woman. And then guess what would be normal? Then, then three people in the marriage would be normal. Then four would be normal. And then you can date your dog and your cow and your rabbit because love is love. Yeah, come on. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. And there's pressure to compromise.
compromise. Right. There's pressure to calm down. There's pressure to, to de-Christianize the message. Right. There's, there's, there's pressure to cut that part out of the Bible and set it aside. You can preach Jesus, but don't preach that. Come on. And pretty soon, though, if you compromise here, they'll come after Jesus, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know what? Who would have dreamed, who would have dreamed we'd live in a time when they said Dr. Seuss was hate speech? Right. Yeah. 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 Like Dr. Seuss, green eggs and ham. Yeah. I do not like it in a can. I do not like it Sam I am or something like that. Give me some green eggs and ham. Hallelujah. Uh, who would have guessed it? Uh, but when I saw them beginning to talk about the fact that Dr. Seuss was hate speech, I thought to myself, if they think Dr. Seuss is bad, they ought to pick up this book. If they pick up this book, this book will knock the hide right off of them. Hallelujah. This book will rebuke their sin and show them what it really is going on. This book doesn't compromise. You know what? They're not coming after Dr. Seuss. That's the short term plan. The long term plan is to pry this book out of your hands and pry its words out of my mouth. Come on, that's what's going on. The long term plan is we're going to play the music soon and you better bow down and boogie to the beat and worship Nebuchadnezzar's golden image or you will be labeled a bigot and not be able to hold a job. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Pressure to compromise. Look at verse number six. And so I'm going through these quickly, I guess, but i got to get to somewhere. And so God's people are living in a strange land. There's pressure put upon them to compromise. Now, now, verse number 6 says, And whoso falleth not down and worship, worship it shall the same hour be cast in the midst or the middle of a burning fiery furnace. So what is the compromise? What is the, the, the consequence for, 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 for not compromising? It is sudden death. Uh, That's the consequence. Yeah. Uh, it is unpleasant death. Yeah. Uh, right? Uh, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not a line, uh, you know, uh, slipping out of the world uh, with your family surrounding you. It's not bad. It's they're going to take you and they're going to bind you and throw you in the midst or the middle of a burning fiery furnace. Uh, amen. And it's going to be painful and it's going to be hard. And the, 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 the then for not bowing down and boogieing. You see, I would admit, admit, tell you this. I don't boogie to Beyonce. Come on, that's right. Preach it. I don't boogie to Jay Z. No, uh oh, come on. Let me let me take it a step further. I don't boogie to Travis Tread. <laughs> oh, glory. You're getting tight in here. I don't boogie to the temptations. We're going to go even deeper for it. We're going to go way, way back. Uh, right? Uh, now, 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 if you do, I'm not saying you're bad. I'm just saying this. A long time ago, I made a decision to come out of the world yeah, and be uh, uh, separated. Right. And, and so I stopped boogieing to yeah. beat. But all of a sudden, they're calling a generation to boogie again. Yeah. They're saying, we're going to bring Beyonce up and, and, and let her sing the song. And when you hear it, you'll boogie or you'll die. Uh, now, That's right. they'll take your job, yeah. which means they'll likely take your home. Yeah. Amen. Right. And your life. We were working on a house yesterday. I get myself and my wife in all kinds of bad situations. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the bedroom that we, that we use in our house, we have a three-bedroom house in the bedroom that we use. We used to have the biggest bedroom. And then the kids got older and the best bedroom. And then the kids got older and they wanted the biggest bedrooms and the best bedrooms, right? And so we took the smallest bedroom and the, and the, and the ugliest bedroom. And so I said, that's what I got. We got, we got to uh, the Thursday, it was Thanksgiving, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I got Monday, Tuesday. I said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to rip this entire bedroom off. I mean, all the way, strip it all the way down to the studs. Um, we're going to rewire it, put in some... Uh, receptacles every six feet um, to make sure it has a switch to show up the lights hallelujah and we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to hoop this bed I'm even going to make it a smart bedroom so I can talk to it and tell it I'm having a good fun time and then, and then, and then I'm going to uh, Take out uh, the, the closet, which was kind of small, and I'm going to 
gonna smash out another spot, which was kind of a pantry we were using anyway, and I'm gonna make me a longer extended sort of well, bigger closet, and I'm gonna do it all by the time I go back to work on uh -huh. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? And so uh, so we've been working, man. <laughs> I got scratches and, and scrapes all over me. I mean, we've been working. I mean, it's, but what's my point? Uh, I don't even quite remember. <laughs> I told you this story for a reason, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Bad situation, said you. <laughs> Amen. Thanks for being my brain. Uh, sometimes we get ourselves in some bad situations where, where we are uh, wall to extend our closet and we started looking around. I'm the kind of guy that if I don't know what I'm doing, I probably just chance it. <laughs> see what happens. My wife's the kind of gal that if I don't know what I'm doing and she can see it in my face, she'll say, you better call your daddy. <laughs> as a hater uh -huh. that's right and anti-science yeah. and all this other stuff right it seemed to me if you were pro-science you would believe in basic biology yeah yeah come on brother amen yeah uh, look at verse 12 for me it, with me i guess i should say and then certain jews whom thou hast set over the affairs there are certain Jews of which thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of, the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. Uh, thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. What's going on in verse number 12? Well, all of a sudden somebody notices that when the music's playing, playing Shadrach's not bowing. Somebody knows, somebody's noticing that when the, when the psaltery starts playing, guess what's happening? Meshach standing tall, saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is yeah. one, and thou shalt yeah. love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, yeah. and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, and have no other gods before me. Shema Israel, which is the, the, the Hebrew equivalent for Deuteronomy 6.4. I learned that a long time ago. Uh, amen. And so, so there was with the morning prayer that they would pray every day. Hear, uh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, which means that I have to worship him yeah. and not Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, and if I bring Nebuchadnezzar into my worship, then I am guilty of bringing other gods before the one. I am guilty of idolatry. Shadrach wasn't bowing. Meshach wasn't bowing. Uh, they were not bowing. So guess what happens anytime you refuse to compromise? Somebody's going to tap on. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Amen. They said, "How are we going to enforce this? Uh, this man, this government mandated shot." Right. They said, "Well, it'd we'll be easy. Well, we can't put a, uh, an inspector in every business. No, no, you can't. So it, it, it'd be easy." though because there'll be enough tattletales to tell everybody. Right. Amen. Amen. How are we going to force it? I mean, you know, how are we going to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do? How am I going to know in the providence of Babylon that when the music plays, everybody bows? Well, because there's enough tattletales to go around. And so in verse number 12, a tattletale 
came to the king and said these words uh, in verse 12, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. What are they doing? They're pretty much telling them, uh, Nebuchadnezzar that these three Hebrew boys are unwilling to compromise. That's right. Right. Unwilling to compromise. You know, it's easy to feel like we're unwilling to compromise when I still got my car and my house, yeah. uh, right? And the clothes on my back and a way to, to, to make money. It's easy. Question is, what do I do when the rubber meets the road? That's right. So the town of tale comes to Nebuchadnezzar and says, uh, these guys are not doing what you're, they're supposed to be doing. And in verse 14, the Bible reads, Nebuchadnezzar spake unto them and said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? And, and now Nebuchadnezzar's being pretty nice to them. He gives them in verse 15 an opportunity to get it right. In other words, he said, look, man, I don't want to find you. I don't want to hurt you. I really don't even want to kill you. I just want you to do what you are told. Yeah. It's all about mm -hmm. control. That's right. Come on. Come on. And that's why there will always be a new variant. Amen. Yeah. Come on. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just want you to do what you're told. But wait a minute. We have freedom. Yeah, do what you're told. We don't care about your freedoms. We, we don't care about your freedom of speech. We censored that a long time ago. Yeah. We don't care. Come on. About your freedom of religion. We shut down churches way back in 2020 and some of them shut down voluntarily as this one did uh, for a certain period of time but others did them in other states where they tried to force them to pretty much shut down period yeah. and they had to fight it right what are we going to do verse 14 verse 15 says now Nebuchadnezzar is being nice to them Nebuchadnezzar says now if you are ready you haven't been doing what's right before, but now if you're ready, you have been uh, refusing uh, with a strong neck to obey my rules. But now if ye are ready, uh, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet of, of flute, hard sack, but sultry and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, uh, but if ye worship not, you should be cast the same hour into the midst of a fiery uh, fiery furnace and who is that God which shall deliver you out of my hand you know what I would do at this moment so I'm called before the king and the king says here's, here's, the, here's the deal I should throw you into the fiery furnace right now because that's what I said I was going to do but I'm going to give you an opportunity to get it right because I don't really want to harm you I just want your obedience uh, okay. I want you to obey me instead of you to obey God, God. Right. Right. Come I want on. your obedience yeah. you be a loyal little subject uh, and right. do what you're told. Right. <laughs> they used to cry uh, in the days of the revolution. They used to cry, no king yeah. but Jesus. Yeah, that's good. Right. Amen. Yeah, that's good. Thank it's, you. it's kind of Thank beginning you. to sound awfully ringing in my ears. Uh, we got no king but Jesus. But Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, 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 hey. he said, I'm going to give you a chance. You know what I would do? Hey, you know, he said, if, if you're ready now, I'll go ahead and here's what I need you to do. When you hear the sound of the, of the music playing, when you hear it next time, just compromise. So that means, just bow down and worship me. So that means there had to be a moment of time between the conversation with Nebuchadnezzar and the next time the music would play. You know, I would I say, okay, King, well, 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 let me think about that. I'd back out of his palace and uh -huh. I'd go home and cont contemplate it for a minute and think about about it and think about all I had to lose and how fire was hot and how I didn't want to die. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah, right? And I, well, how can I compromise this? How can I justify it? Maybe if I close my eyes when I bow down and go that offensive to God. Come on, preach it. Maybe if I repent beforehand to God, say, hey, God, you know what I'm about to do, just forgive me, okay? And if I go do it, maybe, maybe it'll be okay. I would begin to reason it out in my mind and try to figure out some way to justify it. But you cannot justify sin. You cannot justify wrong. You cannot justify oh, disobedience to the Word of God. You cannot do it. And so, dude, guess what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did? They didn't even go home and think about it. They didn't even take time to, to read. Out the response, they said, We're not even 
careful to answer thee in this matter. We ain't even full of care about it. We got it set in our minds what we're going to do. We will not boogie when Beyonce plays. We will stand for Jesus no matter what the call. But I want you to notice, and I'm closing, I promise. Amen. Verse 24. Actually, verse, I don't know, hallelujah. Verse, we're going to look at verse uh, 17, and there it is. Watch the response to the king. Verse 17. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Now, I like that, don't you? Yeah. You know what I know God is able to do? Deliver. He, he deliver us, amen. Yeah. But absolutely anything. Yeah. Don't you? you? If you believe the Bible and read the Bible and, and understand the Bible, you'll find out that there's nothing uh, too hard for God. There's nothing He can't do. God can put out the fire and, and sit in air conditioning. God can make sure I get out alive. God can keep me from even smelling like smoke. God can make a way. God is able uh, to heal cancer. God is able to heal my eyesight. God is able to take away my back pain. God is able to set us free. I know that I believe that I have faith in that. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt. I have learned so much of God and who He is and seen so much of His actions and read so much of His Word that I am now convinced in myself that God is able to do anything and nothing is too hard for Him. Oh, I'm convinced of it. God is able. Yes, he is. That's strong faith. Amen. Yes. God is able. And here's the hope. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire and furnace. God is able. God can. God has the ability to do anything. But, comma, and here's our hope. And he will deliver us out of thy hand. You know why I call it hope? Because look at the next verse, verse 18. Here's what he said. Here's what they said. But if no. not. Uh -huh. So they said he can. He's able. And here's our hope. He will. That's right. when, you when you bind us and throw us in the furnace, we know he's able. And we're going to have hope all the way down that he will. But, verse 18, if it is not that way, but if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve thy gods. Be it known. Uh, if he's able, I have hope, but if not. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, and he said, well, Jason, what are you trying to do, tell me? I'm trying to tell you you'll never have or see any stronger faith than somebody who says, I know that God is able to do anything. I know he can heal me. I know he can set me free. I know he can save my lost soul. I know God can touch this body of mine. I know God can take away my, 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 my ailments and my physical problems. I know he can place his hand upon me and set me free. And I'm hoping that one day he's going to. That's why I keep talking to him about it. But if not, this is the strongest faith I have ever seen. That's good. See, they want to tell me that true faith says God will no matter what, period. And if you ever deviate from that at all, you don't have any faith. But the strongest Christians I've ever seen said God is able. I hope he will. But if he doesn't, I'll still be here. I've ever seen in my life yeah. was, 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 a, was a little old lady oh, just about on her death. Yeah. Her name was, was Romy uh, Mullins. Yeah. And she looked at me one day and she said, Jason, I, my back hurts so bad. Will you pray for me? I said, Grandma, I'll pray for you. And I, just like I've been praying for you. And I said, you know why I'll pray for you? Because I know God is able. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I know he's able. And so I took her by the hand and began to pray for her. And I prayed, God, in the name of the Lord 
Jesus Christ, let your healing virtue uh, enter into her body and bring healing to her back and set her free and remove this pain. Yeah. We give you praise and honor. We thank you for hearing us. We know that you do. We know that there's nothing too hard for you. You are able. Yeah. You're able. Yeah. And while I'm praying, there's a hope in me. Yeah. There, there, there's faith in me that says, I know he can. Uh -huh. There's hope in me that says, I know he will. Right. But I came back to her house, and the pain was still there. Uh -huh. And I said, Grandma, how's your back doing today? And she said, oh, Jason, it hurts. And she was getting up in years. And the older she got, the bigger TV we had to get for her. Because <laughs> 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 she couldn't see the little ones, so you had to keep going big. Uh -huh. And I said, Grandma, how's your back pain today? And she said, oh, Jason, it hurts. I just don't understand why God won't heal, why he won't heal me or hasn't healed me. And she looked at me and said, I know he's able. I know he can. I'm hoping that he will. That's why I keep praying. I don't understand why he hasn't yet. And I said, well, Grandma, what are you going to do if Jesus never touches your back until you leave this life and go on into the next one? When that glorification, you'll receive a brand new back and a brand new body that will never hurt again. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit believing? She said, no. I know he's able. I believe he can. I hope he will. But if he doesn't, he's still good to yeah. My faith message is wrong. <laughs> they tell me that real faith believes you but believes no matter what he will. And if you ever deviate from that, you're just a compromiser. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, I've seen so much of the contract with the Bible. Yeah, yes, the strongest Christians, the strongest faith I've ever seen is the faith that endured affliction yeah. and still yes. believes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And yes, still believes. Let's pray.